Hey guys, Central Computers here. I know everybody's been super excited to hear about our benchmark results for the upcoming 13th gen Intel CPUs. And I'm happy to announce that the embargo has been lifted and we can finally give you all of that exciting new info. Before we get started on the results themselves, let's just recap the models of the released 13th gen CPUs. Um, starting on the low end, we have the i5 13600K which comes with 6 P cores and 8 E cores and boosts up to 5.1 GHz. In the middle of the line, we have the i7 13700K, which consists of 8 P cores and 8 E cores and will boost up to 5.4 GHz. And at the top of the line, we have the i9 13900K, which consists of 8 P cores and 16 E cores and will boost all the way up to 5.8 GHz. Recap aside, Let's talk about the benchmark systems themselves. We originally benchmarked the 13900K using the top of the line system you guys saw in the last video, which consisted of a 3090Ti for the Win3 Ultra, 32 gigs of Corsair Vengeance at 5600 MHz, and running on Windows 11 at 21H1. In the middle of our benchmarks using that system, the 40 series dropped and we were able to get our hands on the 4090s and we were able to do some last minute testing using that card as well. The second system consists of, of course, the 4090 ROG Strix, 32 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance at 6200 megahertz and also running on Windows 11 21 H1. Both systems are using the Thermal Grizzly contact frame to make sure that the heat spreader gets the best contact on the CPU die. The software we're using to benchmark the systems include Cinebench R20 and R23, Times by Regular and Extreme, and 7-Zip. Cinebench and 7-Zip are more CPU isolating benchmarks, whereas Times by is a more overall system benchmark to showcase simulated gaming performance. For both systems, we removed the front glass and the side panel and set the pumps and the fans all to 100%. We ran all the benchmarks a total of three times to get an average reading from all of them with one minute cooldowns in between Cinebench and 7-zip runs and three minute cooldowns in between the times by runs. And finally, we can talk about those exciting benchmark results that you've all been waiting for starting with Cinebench. In Cinebench R20 and R23, there's around a 50% increase in performance from our 3090 system, and those results are also backed up by our second 4090 benchmark system results. In 7-zip, the results are similar to Cinebench, with a 47% increase on both the 3090 and the 4090 system. Now we'll move on from our more CPU isolating tests to our more general gaming benchmarks with TimeSpy and TimeSpy Extreme. In our regular TimeSpy benchmarks, the results get a little bit interesting. We only see around an 18% increase from the last generation on both of our systems. However, we can't judge too quickly on that one as regular TimeSpy does not scale well with CPUs that have more than eight cores. This is shown further in our TimeSpy Extreme benchmark which is made for more modern CPUs with a higher core count. In these tests, you can see an around 45% increase in performance from last generation. Again, very similar results on our second 4090 system. Wow, based on those benchmarks, you can clearly see that Intel is continuing to improve its architecture with every new release. If you're looking to get your hands on any of these new chips or any of these parts in either of our benchmarking systems, all of these parts can be bought from our store. Additionally, if you're nervous about building your first PC or just want an expert to build it for you, we can easily take care of that here in our store as well. Thank you so much for watching and come by to your local central computers for all your tech needs.